Welcome back everybody. This is Prof Bowden with a brief interlude before we really dig into padding, margin, and float. Once we start getting into these things, we're going to see that we have to be much more precise with our pixels. Before we dive in then, I thought we should take a minute to standardize our pages. And, of course, learn a couple new things in the process. As you can see, I have my usual setup going. HTML and CSS in my editor on the left, and my browser previewing my web page on the right. Right now, we have a page that changes width based on the size of the window. To test it, just resize your window width in your browser and refresh your view. Obviously, having a web page that changes to fit all sorts of different widths can be problematic. So given that, let's standardize our website width. As you may have noticed when comparing your site to mine, different window sizes display our website differently. We're going to start getting more precise with our pixels now that we're using margins, padding, and width, so we want to keep everything reliable. In our HTML, let's wrap the whole container in a single div. This ensures we don't lose our footer off to the side when we style it. Between the body element and our page wrapper div element, let's create a new div element with the ID whole page. Close your brackets, but don't close the element just yet. Now, between the end of the footer div and the end of the body element, let's close our whole page div just as we normally would. Now everything is wrapped in one big package. Back in the CSS, let's style this whole page div. Create an entry for the whole page ID using pound whole page and our standard curly brackets. In this space, we'll do two things. First, let's give it a width of 900 pixels. This means that it will have the same width no matter what size the window is. Next, let's center it using our new margin tools. Hit enter, type margin dash left colon auto semicolon. Hit enter again and type margin dash right colon auto semicolon. This tells the browser that it needs to determine the margin between the whole page div and the left and right sides of the window based on the difference between the 900 pixel width we just assigned it and the size of the window. Save and refresh and you now have a page that stays the same no matter the size of the window. Finally, let's make sure that our web page is never too short to hold our side menu div. Jump down to the page wrapper ID styling and click after the border information. Hit enter to create a new space. Here, we're going to tell the browser the shortest we want our page to be. The browser can still display the page as longer if there is enough content to warrant it. To do this, we'll be tackling a new spin on height called min height. Type min dash height colon 500 px semicolon. This means that our web page will always be at least 500 pixels tall, though it could be more. If we save and refresh, we see that our height is now set to a minimum value. Don't worry though, if the content ends up pushing it past this point, the browser will extend our page appropriately. That's it for this quick setup process. Now we'll be all set for next time when we jump into fixing up our header, creating a proper side menu, and tweaking our content section. See you then!